Hey, what's up guys? It's Aaron with 2 Minute Tech, where I do tips, tricks, news, reviews, and how-tos fast. And today, we're going to look at one of the top RSS apps and services, Feedly. Last week on the channel, I did a breakdown of why I think RSS, or really simple syndication, is critically important in 2020 to making sure that you're getting high quality news. I also did a really deep dive full review of Feedly on my website, 2minute.tech, so if you want to go even deeper than what this video can show you, you can check it out there. One of the initial things that I really like about Feedly is that it's not just an app, it's also a service. So once you create an account with Feedly and choose some of your news sources, you can take that information to multiple other RSS apps. Now in terms of the Feedly app itself, it has a really clean user interface or UI. I really like how you can set the default view to be in either magazine, text only, or card mode. And then you can also set the density of the information to be in either compact or what Feedly calls comfortable. I'm also a dark mode user, so I like the fact that you can switch between what Feedly calls day or night mode. I do however wish that night mode had a little bit more flexibility in choosing some of the color schemes, but overall, this is kind of what I would pick anyway, so I'm pretty happy with it. When you launch the app, up near the top, Feedly also includes something called the Explore tab. It's a really nice feature. This is where Feedly is going to show you trending stories and some of the topics that you follow. So when you first dive into RSS and you're not really sure all of the different websites or publications that you want to follow, the Explore tab can be a really nice place to start to jump off from. Another thing I like about this app are the swipe gestures. I thought swipe gestures were commonplace for all RSS apps, however they're not. These swipe gestures are pretty basic, but if you swipe to the left, you can mark the article as read, or if you swipe to the right, you can put it into your read later queue. I do wish the swipe gestures were customizable, so overall for Feedly, I'd give them a rating of four out of five for interface. The next category that I look for in an RSS reader is the sharing functions. Sharing on Feedly is really superb. There's two ways that Feedly allows you to share your articles from the app. First is from the today view. If you see an article that you just like the headline on and you just know automatically that you want to share it, you can do a long press or a force press on the article and it'll bring up a share menu. The second way you can share is if you're already inside an article that you want to share, in the upper right hand corner you can see a little share icon. Tap that and it'll bring up the share sheet. The thing that I really like about sharing in Feedly is that it's a native share. A lot of times if you share from an application, they want to kind of add a watermark or some little shared from this particular app to try to promote their own app. Feedly doesn't do anything like that. It looks like an actual native share as if you had copy and pasted the article yourself. For that factor alone, I'm gonna give Feedly five out of five for its sharing features. The next category I look at for an RSS reader is the read later functionality. Read later functionality is one of the biggest strengths of an RSS application. Many times when I open up my phone and I open up my RSS application, I just wanna skim the headlines, see if there's anything that looks interesting to me and save it so that I can read it later. There are some pros and cons that Feedly has in this particular category. For one, Feedly has something that they call boards, which basically means that you can save an article to read later in a specific board, kind of like the way Pinterest boards work. So for Feedly, boards are one of the pros, but one of the cons are is that they don't allow you to access any other read it later services like Pocket or Instapaper unless you subscribe to their monthly subscription. Even though boards are such a read later strength, the fact that it's not customizable for outside services made me rate it a four out of five for read later. The last category I look at for an RSS app is pricing. And at the free tier, Feedly is seriously a really great RSS app, but the pay tiers, are a total mess. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of really, really great features in the pay tiers. However, I feel that the pricing is pretty inconsistent for what you're getting. If you sign up on Feedly's website, you get one set of pricing and one set of options. If you sign up on your iPhone app, it's a completely different set of pricing and they limit the amount of options that you can get. There's a lot to unpack with pricing, so if you want more information about the pricing structure and my opinions on it, head over to 2minute.tech for the full article. So my overall rating for Feedly is a four out of five. I really feel like this might be the gold standard for an RSS application. Particularly at the free tier, if you're a basic user or just getting started, you're gonna get everything you could possibly ask for. However, if you wanna get more out of your RSS application, you can get it with Feedly. I just particularly feel like the pricing is a little bit too steep. Thanks for watching.